Now this is a beautifully done up industrial modern freehold inter-terrace that is in the heart of District 15. Prof Imbras is back with our landed home tour series and we're heading into this beautifully done up inter-terrace that I think the moment you head into level 1, you won't even want to spend time on level 2 and 3 because the entire living, dining and kitchen is so beautifully renovated that I think you probably would just want to stay at home all weekend. So let's head in and have a look in detail. I can't let you go. So when you tell your friends that you live in District 15, everybody knows that this is one of the most popular districts in the entire Singapore. It's so close to the sea in East Coast that everybody loves to live here and we're so close to the city centre as well. Something very interesting about this place is that we are right within this square that is being fronted from Steel Road, East Coast Road, Tanjong Katong Road as well as Changi Road. In future, when the Thompson East Coast Line is being completed, probably to be at the year 2024, it's going to bring you from Sigla, Marine Terrace, Marine Parade towards Tanjong Katong, Tanjong Ru and then you'll hit right straight to Marina Bay Sands and Orchard Boulevard. Tambling, Juchet, Katong and Dunman area, these are places that is known for a lot of Peranakan food. And Tambling happens to be located in a place that has a lot of rich heritage, more of a Peranakan style. So if you were to come to the Juchet locale, you'll notice that there are a lot of shop houses that is located along the entire belt of the Juchet precinct. This is not just in the heart of the D15 zoning, it is also in a very popular locale where a lot of parents love to buy landed properties right here because they were within one kilometer from three very popular schools and that includes Hate Girls, Tanjong Katong Primary as well as CHIJ Katong. Let me bring you back to the front. We are at a three-storey freehold inter-terrace status. Land size is 1625 square feet. The land plot is 7.3 meters. Depth is about 20.8 meters. Freehold status. Car porch is beautifully done. This can go as deep as a one and a half car. So if you have two cars or a friend that's coming to visit you, what they can do is actually you can leave your gate on. You can go stretch all the way up the two cars. But one huge car is comfortably for this entire car porch. There are also a lot of public parking spaces right on the left and right side. There are this very nice roofing that's being done. So it's done with an exterior look like a black and white kind of style. But the moment we enter, you'll notice that it is a modern industrial feel. We have two entrances right here. This is the main door entrance. Of course, you, you come back, just you tap your card key. Typically, you can just use your sliding panel door. In fact, the theme is consistent because it flows from the black and white style on the exterior. The, and the moment it flows in, the design internally still maintains the black and white kind of look. But it's being flushed with a nice tinge of light grey tone that spreads throughout the entire place. Now this living room has two portions. One will be this grand space for this grand piano. After your grand piano is being placed right here, you still have a huge amount of space in the entire bandwidth of this living room space. Firstly, it's because you have a white frontage of 7.3 glass kind of design, so you feel that this is a really beautiful see-through kind of version. The moment your auto gate is being closed, the walls are pretty high, so you do get the level of privacy that you want. You can enjoy your entire day in the living room itself, including sitting down on this beautiful, nice beach so far. We love the amount of wall line that you have and this wall line stretches on towards your split dining that crosses the skylight as well. This skylight comes from the side wall on level 2. This is not usually seen but the beauty is that it does not have direct sunlight coming to level 1 but that brings in so much natural brightness into the entire home itself. So this wall line right here is being done as a very minimalist TV console and partial bookshelf system. If you want to build an entire wall deck up to the ceiling, that's doable. Level 1 floor tiles, if you notice, this is a very nice neutral grey tone. Having a very matte finishing, very easy to maintain. And we love the fact that the entire 
car porch area plus the garden zoning has all been retouched with very lasting tiles. There's a nice uh, under stairway storage space right here. I think that's a nice glass door. Of course, you can also convert into a wine cellar if you want by installing the air conditioning system inside. But we like the fact that your auto gates are being done nicely. It is also being done with the Alexa smart home system pre-built for the entire level one plus the master room so anything on level one including your air cons which is inducted right in the ceiling including your television your lightings which is done with the philips hue system now in order to pre-built your Alexa system, of course you need to spend a little bit of investment in terms of the electrical wiring. Furthermore, if you want to hide your wirings, that will take a little bit of work as well. This home is already pre-done for the entire level 1 plus the master room. That is Alexa right there. I'm going to test out using Alexa to close the front gate. Alexa, close the front gate. The gate is closing. I did it, alright. Okay, I'm going to stand here. Make sure you can see the gate. Let's try again. Alexa, Open the gate. Oh my goodness, it's cool. Alexa, off the lights. A few things share the name lights. Which one did you want? On the living room lights. Oh yes, we did it. Okay, how about here? Let me on the fan again. Alexa, on the fan. Yes, we did it. All right, that's cool. So this house was fully a and in the year 2014 and then in 2018 there was some progressive uh, renovation that was being done as well including the smart home system installation. Dining space can go all the way up comfortably 8 seater. <laughs> And this kitchen is really beautifully done because the kitchen in itself has three different zones. Firstly will be your breakfast counter area. Secondly, this is a place for you to do some light cooking, entertain a little bit. Nice dedicated sink right here. Brand oven, which looks very new as well. Third portion of the kitchen will be your wet kitchen area with these two huge panel sliding glass door. You have this open flame cooker hood right here. These are brand system appliances. Nice U-shaped design. Electrolux fridge is right here. Nice two-door fridge that's already fitted at this corner. Ventilations window at the back. There are so many different kinds of storage capabilities. You have this pull-out kind of panels for cutleries. Smartly done corner that you can still put stuff within this portion right here. And you also have a top pull-out at the top. Hinges wise, these are all bloom. Bloom hinges, they last a very long time. Another couple of bottom storage at the bottom. Okay, so our owners told us that they don't cook at all. So all these are like pretty much unused. Two things are important when you build an island. If you want to modify and add on an island at home, it's a pretty heavy job because in order to install a sink, you need to dig underground to bring in the piping system to have this sink within your island. Let me show you this very interesting portion right here because from outside, it just looks like a designer bookshelf or a magazine shelf and with this nice full-length mirror but it is in disguise a beautiful common bathroom. Ground things are done with acrylic finishing. You have very nice backdrop finishings in terms of tonality for the water house as well. Beautifully done designer sink, plus there's a lot of space in the common bathroom on level one. There's also another portion, which is here. This part of the house, you have a nice swing door that you can either pull outwards or you can push back. That will bring you to two portions. The first portion will be this part that can be used as a storage zone. Alternatively, you can use this storage zone to double up as a space for a living helper. So if you have a living helper, there's a good amount of space with a nice ventilation window on these two portions. So at the back portion, there's the space for you to put in your washer cum dryer. Now coming back to living and dining, something to take note is that these are all done with nice Daikin aircon ducted into the ceiling. And the entire home are done with high cool fan which are being controlled by the Alexa system as well. Now, this is the time for us to talk about price. Right now what's happening in the entire Singapore landscape is that if you want to get yourself a freehold or triple nine years inter-terrace property, you definitely must start from the $3 million mark. And that includes 
from the suburban areas, starting from D19, D28. If you go for a condition that is more move in, that will at least need a three and a half million dollars mark. If you're looking for a brand new, brand new that the developer has just completed building, inter terraces right now in D19 or even some parts of D28, they're inching at the four million dollars mark. Now, the moment you come to D15, you realize that the price will shift up a notch. Older inter terraces that are meant more for rebuild, they're now ranging at about three to three. 3.2 million dollars. Something that is very moving for you will definitely inch between 3.5 all the way to maybe about 3.8 million dollars. If you want something that is brand new, you look at some of the properties that is right now selling in D15, they are calling at a range of 4.2 to maybe even 4.5 million dollars for the mega houses that are being rebuilt from scratch. The moment you start to rebuild inter terrace, you can go probably up to about 3,006 to 4,000 square feet if you dig a basement. Now asking price for this house is at $3.78 million. Owners has maintained this minimalist industrial modern design home for the past couple of years. You just have to move in with your family and your kids. In the event of a rebuild, this can go up to about 3,006 to 4,000 built up area. Multiply that by about $300, that will bring you to a total rebuild cost of 1.2 million. If you dig the basement, set aside another 500K, so that will bring you to about $1.7 million. The total cost from buying this at three point seven eight odd million dollars plus a one point two million dollars rebuild cost that would then end up to be close to about four point nine odd million dollars uh, maybe ten years later. Meantime let's check on level two. In case you're wondering where is the skylight coming from, it's coming from level 2. So even towards your back, you don't have a back wall that's sticking towards your neighbor's back wall as well. And this portion, you can have a look down towards your living and dining. And this is the air well that flows the natural light downwards. Let's have a look at the master room first. Very first thing you'll notice, there's two portions. One will be your walk-in closet zoning. The moment you close out the walk-in closet, you will get to see that you have a nice full height panel mirror. And the moment we head into your walk-in wardrobe, this is like a boutique. And you have so many different cabinetry right here. A lot more bottom storage as well as top hung cabinetry. So these are all great for mini luggages and storage space. Ensuite, beautifully done. Sliding panel with internal plugs right here, which is very useful. You can plug it for a shaver and stuff. Hotel like design with an inbuilt plug area for your hair dryer system. Alright, your long bath, shower space with a huge, gigantic rain shower. WC zoning. The master room has nine full panels that is below the window for you to have additional storage space. Not forgetting you still have four top panels right on top that you can store all your pillows and linens and stuff. King bed currently. So if you look towards the front, right opposite you, these are two semi-Ds. The distance between the houses opposite you is also pretty far away. As you head to level 3, you notice that the staircase are all done with very nice finishings on the staircase railing. Flooring-wise, vinyl, very long-lasting. Coming to level 3, if you notice, all landings at every level has very huge window panels and these are all designed to bring in natural light in. You have a nice storage space over at this corner, so we can put in a lot of stuff at the bottom as well. And right at this corner, this will be your common bathroom that's being shared by the two bedrooms right here. As you can see, these are all very nicely renovated bathroom with beautiful fittings that's being done. Rain shower for this level as well. As we head out, I'm going to bring you to the first common bedroom. First common bedroom, we have this corner dedicated for your built-in wardrobe system. There are no built-in wardrobes right now because owners is actually using this more like a guest room and study room area. You do have existing panels at the bottom that you can use as your clothing space. You still have top portions to put in your linens and stuff. So a lot of storage space that is tucked within the top and bottom of the window space. As we move here, huge table that is already done. And as you come to level 3, you notice that the ceiling height is also pretty generous. In this room, 
has a very nice view because uh, of this full height panel window at the back that's dropped down all the way towards your calf level. Pretty nice view of the sandalwood conservation houses right opposite us. Room size, very decent. Nice corner for your study table, king queen bed. There's already a piano right here. So this portion on this entire wall line, this can be for your built-in wardrobe system. You also have small little pockets right at the corner for some additional storage or bookshelf area as well. This level I think is very suitable for your kids. Bunk bed version of these two bedrooms for your four kids to live in together. And daddy mummy will occupy level two. Let's head downstairs. Okay, so why are landed properties so popular in the year 2020 and now in 2021? There's still an enormous amount of demand for landed homes, especially in the inter-terraces like this one. So when you look at a landed property, you're buying not just the land, you're also buying the building that's sitting right on top of the land. And ultimately, you can do a rebuild if you want. The land price will appreciate in tandem with the market. So two forms of appreciation land price appreciation as well as construction cost appreciation plus of course the third factor is the opportunity cost uh, which is time itself so if i were to put this three into a triangle for you firstly is that you have a nice plot of land at 1625 square feet secondly of course the structure wise is beautiful you're buying something that's already three story in future there's potential to go up to three and a half if you want to rebuild the third thing is that you save your opportunity cost to renovate you don't have to do a and a you don't have to rebuild you can move in literally straight on and this is 3.78 in the event if you don't have to look at this place give a call to our listing manager the numbers are all right down below and uh, do remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our landed home tour series especially. And once again, my name is Melvin Lim, Property Lim Brothers. As always, happy to show the place. Take care. You have this open flame uh, cooker right here with the hood and hood. So if you do very heavy cooking, you have an open flame cooker hood. Hot. <laughs> Stairwell uh, storage space that is done with a nice glass door so you can put in some stuff right here. And huh? What? Twenty. Oh my goodness, scary! Hey, seven months or what? <laughs>